Hello and welcome to the very first tutorial that I will be giving you. This one will be for a particular LiDAR map. Now there are actually a couple I'd like to... <laughs> that is Phoenix. There are actually a couple that I'd like... <laughs> Come on baby girl. All right, so we're gonna head over to caltopo.com. Now keep in mind, there is a free version and then there is a pro version. I did sign up for the pro version. I'm gonna show you everything you can get with the free version. So we're on Caltopo and we're in the area of Amatol. So when you come over here, you may be asked to sign in, but don't forget there is a free version. So when you come to this website, you're gonna be automatically on the Map Builder Topo. But if you select the drop down menu, you're going to have all these selections. So to get to the LiDAR, I'm going to select Relief Shading, Shaded Relief. And there you go. So the oval here, you see that is the racetrack. And then if you go up here, there are still foundations left over from the Amatol World War I munition plants. And this place was huge. It was, it was absolutely no joke. Just keep in mind that with Amatol, uh, a third of it is private property and that's the lower end of the track. But to my surprise, like two years ago, I ran, I manually ran a LiDAR. <clears throat> and there was a lot more stuff that is over here, as you can see. Um, but this area is also private property. I did go and check it out. There is this, this spot right here is a road, <clears throat> but there's private property signs posted all along here. So I don't know what those are, uh, but just also, um, for your knowledge, there was the town of Amatol, which was built a little over a mile away from the actual Amatol munition plants. And that village existed right here. And there were several hundred people that actually lived here. Uh, there is still foundations left in the area. And you can see that all here. Let me show you what else you can do with this LiDAR. So here you're not seeing everything so clearly. It's a little bit blurry. What I could do is come over to your map overlays, select slope angle shading, and it will give you a drop down where you can fix where you can get fixed or gradient and I usually select gradient because it makes things pop out a little bit more uh, just to show you what fixed is fixed gives you a little bit more detail but with gradient it, it just it the detail is there more like with Amatol you can see where the old roads were you can see where the foundation still exists. There's just a lot of cool things with that. All right, so I'm gonna show you another thing you can do with this. You go over here, you select stack base layer. And here you can select historic maps. So select historic and you get another drop down below. So you have 1885 to 1915 and then 1915 to 1945. So we're going to do the 1885 to 1950. Here is your, here is your opacity, and you can slowly increase that. And you might want to shut off the slope angle shading. And then I'm going to change it to 1915 to 1945. So I'm at 100% opacity for historic. I turn that down. Now I see the LiDAR. So I can run them together. And I can also do another stack layer base or a stack base layer. But this is just a couple of things. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So not only can you do the LiDAR, the historic maps, you can also take your pins from Google Earth and transfer it here. Now note that part is pro, but I'm just going to show you real quick on how to do that. 
All right, so this is my Google Earth. Um, I did do a test one where I just posted three random pins. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click that, save my places as, and I'm going to save it as a test KMZ file. Now I already did that just to run it, just to make sure everything worked. All right, so I take that, I click import, I choose files. I'm gonna take the test KMZ file, open. Because I have coordinates loaded, it's gonna tell me how far away these pins are away from those coordinates. But just click import. And there you go, it's going to import those three pins. There's one there, there's one there, and there is one there. Now, no, if you have hundreds of pins like I do, it's going to have trouble. Um, so just make sure you organize your pins, maybe by county, and then import it that way. Um, just know it will have issues. So I'm just going to delete that because we don't need it for the rest of the tutorial. That was just to show you. All right, so what else do we have? Well, I'm actually gonna probably keep it on shaded relief. So down below you have your map overlays where you can do the contours. You could do mixed 40 feet. Uh, there's a map builder overlay, which shows you the roads and name of the towns. There's railroad tracks. Um, there's the slope angle shading, which we already did. There's the geology. Now it will colorize it and you go down to the link below and you click that and it will tell you what the geology in the area is. So that's unconsolidated. I'm just curious. Oh, there we go. There is where it changes. So like purple would be metamorphic. That's actually really cool. All right, let's go back to our area. Um, the public lands I ran before and it wasn't really loading. I don't know if it was because I had it on the shaded relief, but it doesn't seem to really work. You can also do parcel data. So if you want to find out if it's private property or anything like that, you can load the parcel data. You can load it as boundaries only, which is what I have it on. Uh, structures will only show you the current structures. It's not gonna show you structures that ha had existed in the past. Motor vehicle, I'm not exactly sure what that one's for. Uh, recreation, so you can select ski or mountain bikes and it should show you trails of where you can ride, where you can ride mountain bikes. And I know there's stuff over here. There we go, I'm gonna click the link over here. Yep, and here is the legend that actually tells you what everything is. So the dotted line are the trail systems. And we're gonna do the recreation info. And here is the mountain bike info. Um, let's go back to the area and look at fire history because when I ran this earlier, it was actually pretty interesting. Um, I'm gonna put it back on shaded relief only because it's, it's cleaner. All right. So the fire history, 1900 to present, it shows you all the fires that happened in that area. I can also do 2000 to present and I'll show you all the forest fires, including the smaller ones. It'll show you current fire activity, which there's yellow stars, uh, 24 to 36 hour old. This is And you can also do cell phone coverage. 
So if you click on the cell phone coverage and you see all the shaded area, just click the cell coverage info and it will tell you which ones are dominant in that area. Weather shading is also good. So I have the 48 hour snowfall selected and I know we're supposed to be getting snow. And if you click this area, and if you notice this color is like a purple, you go down here and you like scale it to what color, you match it to what color. And this would be the five inch uh, predictor. But it also shows you 4.41, 4.53. That just shows a little bit more detail. It also show you the winds in the area. And actually, if you're ever curious about like a great weather website um, that shows you all the current stuff happening, I will show you that in a later video. Um, but here, see all the green streaks? That means the current wind is about 10 miles an hour. Avalanche, um, if you're in an area where there's aval avalanche forecasts, I imagine this would be a useful tool for you to look at. All right, so we also have weather stations and what these are, let me find one. It's what the weather stations are currently reporting. So here is a blue dot and it, Hamilton is currently reporting 29 degrees at 740, which was actually 13 minutes ago. And what the wind speed was, what the wind gust is. The other cool thing you can look at is aircraft that are currently in the area. And if I zoom out, there you go. The JBU 1251 is currently flying near that area. I can zoom out more and I'll show you all the airplanes. This is an airport over here. And it's real time data. So it the map will move or the airplanes will move as it updates. She's back. Now going back to the drop down list, you also have marine charts. And this is the Delaware River up here. That's the Atlantic Ocean. You also have the FAA chart as well. And this is basically what pilots use. And we go back to historic, which will probably take a while to load. So if I had to rate this website on a scale from zero to 10, I would definitely give it a nine and a half because it just simply does everything that I need. So as someone who looks for history, uh, this, this site is absolutely awesome. But I will be doing another video of another website that I use. Um, it's just as good as this one, but it mainly focuses on New Jersey and it does bleed into other um, areas like portions of New York and Pennsylvania, Maryland. And I'll be doing that video at a later time. Uh, I will drop a comment in the community and let you know when I'm working on it. So let me know what you think of this video. If you like more tutorials in the future, let me know. And thank you all for joining.